Movement is extremely important in Shinobi Striker. You either master it or this will be you. <laughs> or this. <laughs> or this. <laughs> My name is Globku and today we're gonna take you from the very basics of movement in Shinobi Striker all the way up to some pretty advanced techniques. <laughs> Title screen. Yeah. All right, so super basic. You can run on the ground by moving the left stick and the same goes for running on the walls, but walls kind of change everything. So we'll get there later. The X button on PlayStation or the A button on the Xbox. We're going to use PlayStation buttons for this one. So the X button on PlayStation jumps. You also have a double jump in case a single jump is not enough. So just press X once again, once you're already in the air and you will have a double jump. Those are the very basics. Pretty easy, right? Let's take it to the next level. The L2 button when pressed with a direction makes a dodge movement. This dodge can also be used in the air. It doesn't cover a large distance, but it does allow you to stop and think about your next move for a little while because you stop falling all of a sudden and you just dodge sideways. The R2 button is dedicated to the chakra jump. Basically, the longer you hold it down, the longer your character jumps. If you just tap the button, it won't do anything. You always need to hold it for at least a little bit, but also a little bit won't get you very far. In fact, if you're doing that, you might as well be pressing the X button to jump. There is a maximum charge you can reach, which is when a little chakra explosion happens or it just kind of shines. That animation is there just to let you know that you've maxed out your jump. You can hold the button down for longer, but you won't jump further. You're already at max distance. Also in the air, you have a kunai with a string, as most people notice. This this is the technique that Sasuke used against Naruto in their final battle. You do this by pressing R2 while in the air, the same button you press for the chakra jump. And your character will throw a kunai in the direction you point with the left thumbstick. It doesn't automatically aim, it does not automatically search for a wall to land, you have to point it manually. And this is the reason why I died a lot of times. If you hit a wall, then everything else is automatic. The character pulls itself towards the wall. But the reason why I died was uh, as simple as miscalculating the height I was at. Or by not realizing the kunai wasn't going to reach, because it also doesn't have infinite length. If you're too far from a wall, it will not connect. And the thing is, once you throw the string, you can't spam it. You only have one per jump. So unless you know of a way to reset the kunai with a string, and you've already wasted the double jump, you're pretty much dead. There's nothing you can do but fall to the hole. But that's where the more advanced techniques come into play. So let's take it to the next level. Pretty much everything you do in the air resets your kunai with a string. If you haven't used your double jump yet, it will reset your string. Even your ninjutsu will reset your string. Heck, some jutsu will send you flying across the map on their own, so maybe you won't even need to use the string at all. In fact, using ninjutsu to fly through the air is a very viable technique, as we can see from this gameplay by Shirako, where he repeatedly uses Sasuke's Shidori to fly across the map because the cooldown on pretty much all abilities is so low, it doesn't really matter if you just use it to move and not to attack. Chances are, when you engage in the next battle, the ability will be ready to use already. When Shirako used Naruto, however, he was spamming Rasen Shuriken from the air. And Rasen Shuriken is not like Toshidori, it doesn't make your character move. Every time he missed a kunai with a string, he would throw a Rasen Shuriken, and that's precisely to reset the string so he can save himself from falling. So as a rule of thumb, unless you're 100% certain of what you are doing, never double jump and then use the string. Never. Always do jump, string, and then you can jump again to reset the string for a second use. Otherwise, you might be forced to use a jutsu just to survive in the air, which is not too bad because the cooldowns are not that long, unless it's a jutsu that sends you straight into the ground. And at the end of the day, you don't want to be building your loadout based around this, right? You should be mastering movement so you don't actually need to use jutsu just to move around. If it's a part of your strategy, great. If it's just to save your ass because you panicked, that's probably a bad thing. Finally, let's Let's talk about the walls. I told you walls changed everything and that's very, very true. First of all, you cannot direct your chakra jump with as much precision as you can on the ground. If you use chakra jump while on a wall, you will shoot out in a perpendicular direction. You can't really move forward like you would while you're on the ground. You always move sideways if you use the chakra jump. 
And the same goes for jumping with X. You can jump and reattach yourself to the wall, but usually when you press X, you will fall to the ground. So if you want to keep wall running, just don't press any buttons. That would be my tip. The walls do have a cool little technique though, which is when you're going directly up. And I mean vertically up, not diagonally, straight up. If you press X while going straight up, your character will do this ninja move where it kind of vanishes and zigzags. Not only does it look very cool, it is actually very, very useful. First of all, it seems to ignore most of your movement debuffs. If you've been hit with a slow tag or if you're carrying the flag, it seems that uh, you almost always perform this move at roughly the same speed. And also, so we still need to confirm this, but I think you're immune to damage while doing it. Which really wouldn't shock me if that turns out to be the case, given that it's such a short animation and it's incredibly situational. You won't be able to climb straight up all the time, especially if you're trying to run back to your base with a flag on your back. And now my brave ninjas take all of this knowledge into the battlefield. Juke your opponents with movements their eyes can follow and more importantly, use this knowledge not to embarrass yourself like I did time and time again learning how to play this game. Do that and your biggest enemy won't be the hole on the ground, but it will be the skilled ninjas on the enemy team. In the meantime, if you haven't checked out the Byakugan gameplay we uploaded, I highly recommend it. Click right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also this video right here. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name's Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.